Hello everyone and welcome to uh, What Culture Gaming. I'm Josh, joined as ever by Ash Millman because someone very nice on Twitter actually pointed out a new story we missed this morning about Eli Roth apparently directing the Borderlands movie. This has been in a tweet from Randy Pitchford, CEO of Gearbox who make the Borderlands series, in a, in a tweet that was deleted, Ash. Is this, is this the crack? What's it going on? It went up and then went away very, very quickly. So uh, good old Randy, Randy Pitchford tweeted, I'm very excited to welcome Eli Roth as director of the Borderlands Borderlands movie in development with Lionsgate and Arid Productions. Please welcome at Eli Roth to the team and be sure to catch the at Gearbox official main theatre show at hashtag PAX East on 227 to learn more. Hashtag Borderlands movie. That is a very CEO, uh, SEO, sorry, uh, friendly um, tweet that. It's it's a very exciting piece of news to just drop like on something like that. Well, it's, yeah, it seems like it's a sort of weird preemptive strike because if yeah. it was deleted, when is it going to turn up? It might be by the time this video is actually announced because it might be. wasn't a Borderlands movie announced on the quiet last year. And I don't it think was anyone, 2015 that they started talking ago. about Borderlands movie. Well, yeah, like this it, is why? Popping up then? Um, because I remember, I remember it happening, and then nobody kind of assuming anything was going to happen with yep. it. And obviously, if it was 2015, that was five years ago yeah. coming on, and uh, nothing, re no development has actually happened. But now, if Eli Roth is coming on to direct, that's kind of cool. The image that they posted of him in the um, Borderlands sort yes, of art style was was it got me excited, even yeah. though I don't really love Borderlands, and I'm not a huge fan of Eli <laughs> Roth. But I think the pairing is interesting because yes. I like both enough. I went, yeah. When I, when I say I don't like them, I, I don't mean you know their entire thing. I like parts Josh of Borderlands. I like I like Eli Roth movies. I like the, you know, the original. Why you just hate everything? I don't hate everything. I'm just saying it's a very funny um, you know yeah. collaboration. I think they absolutely suit each other down to the ground as a thing because Eli Roth does R-rated, hard, gory, horrible movies um, that like veer towards a bit silly sometimes. And Borderlands is known for being all the like, guns shooting, ridiculous um, in its humor and all that sort of thing. And I just think they'll play off each other really really nicely. I feel like Eli Roth has the perfect tone for this. Yeah, I mean, I've never seen really an Eli Roth um, movie on a major scale. I've only really seen his horror films. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. him do a proper, what I would assume is a major action movie like this, but if you can blend the the sort of horror and comedy stylings that yes. he's known for with something on a grander scale, that's a good sign because they could have made a Borderlands game that was essentially Borderlands light and watered mm. down the things that people love about it, you know, the violence, the humor, the settings, the characters, because at the heart of it is, for as cartoony as it is, mm. the the story of Borderlands Two especially yes. is very sort of character driven. Like yeah. those characters are why a lot of people fell in love with the franchise mm -hmm. in the first place, and there is a real story there to be brought to the big screen. I absolutely agree. Borderlands Two is the one that I played the most of. I kind of dabbled in uh, the other two slightly, but Borderlands Two was the one that I enjoyed the most for the co-op campaign, all the stuff, and it's because you engage so much with the characters. So to see it on the screen would be great, but the important question is whether it's going to be cell shaded animation or live action because when you hear all this I instantly think live action but hopefully it's animated. That's really interesting because like you said the assumption was when you uh, hear about a movie adaptation you assume yeah. it's going to be live action but in is it? Maybe it's a better show to do it as an animation? I think that they have such a distinct art style that has defined their series. If they veer away from animation, then you're, you're, you're stirring up some, some rustling waters of interest very well put yes. i think i think especially because when it comes to you know the borderland series there's this post apocalyptic yeah. landscape but it's very colorful and i think if you did that in live action you might just end up drawing comparisons Ooh. to the likes of mad max fury road it's which is good but you don't want to make it come across as derivative of something else when yeah. like you said the borderlands series has such a distinctive personality Absolutely. and aesthetic the producers are the most interesting part about this i think because eli roth yes perfect but the producers is where the money comes in and the things happen um and it's avian Arad and his son uh, Ari Arad, who have been involved in the creation of stuff like Iron Man, uh, Spider Man, The Amazing Spider Man, X Men, Ghost Rider, and Blade. It's funny you should mention him actually, Ash, because uh, we were just done news on the Uncharted movie, mm -hmm. and for the longest time, he was also a producer. Yes, on that. he likes video game. Movie. I think this nice production house segue. likes the. Uh, likes the video game style of thing, um, especially comic book tying into it as well, because obviously they span all these different types of media. So I think they're in good hands with those and big colorful movies, some hitters, some misses, but all have heart behind them, I would yeah. argue. And I think that this needs a lot of heart behind it because of how beloved the property is to so many fans. Well, this is not only the question of whether it's going to be live action or animated or cel shaded. I wonder whether they're going to directly 
adapt those plots from the games, mm. you would have to assume that. Oh, well. I, I'd want to see it, but uh, well, come on, you've got well, some information here. I'm going to you got to throw this, everything this, around. This big piece of paper that I've got. Tell me more. You want to talk to me about plots? Yeah, do I you? do. Do you, Josh Bryant? Well, first I'm going to tell you a different quote, which is <laughs> uh, which is basically the heart of the movie sort of thing that they talked about with the Lionsgate people who are running it, and they said part of our strategy in entering the game space under Peter Levin, uh, who is the nerdist CEO, has been to source new brands with built-in audiences that will translate into great films and television shows. The Borderland games don't pull any punches and will make the movie in the same in-your-face attitude that has made the series a blockbuster mega franchise. So, you know that Lionsgate are handling it Good with start. this sort of attitude towards honouring the source material and bringing the big blockbuster stylings and doing cool stuff with it. But then I did some digging, dear watchers. Where did you get the shovel from? Oh, I just I, I went and dug into Google <laughs> and uh, had a look around and to see if I could find anything on the plot of this um, film. And I could find some things. How trustworthy they are, I'm not sure. Interesting. I have two different versions of what the plot could be, <laughs> and both of them come from the only like they're the only sources that post it. So I'm, I'm not sure how reliable it is. I want to hear them anywhere because right. I, I want any kind of scrap. So we'll go for the we'll go for the the more the the more. Give me the wacky. No, okay, okay. We're gonna do a puzzle. Uh, fine. Because, because this is apparently where it was born from, which is again apparently apparently it was the elevator pitch for Lee Winnell to join the team um, and was posted by Omega Underground, but then has since been deleted. Page 404, error, not oh, found. Mysterious. Which is it's described as a cross between Guardians of the Galaxy and the aforementioned Mad Max. Uh, the story depicts a bleak future in which an abandoned mining colony on a, dis dis on a distant planet I'm really excited sorry, <laughs> has uh, created a lawless society. When a nearby star's gravitational pull unearths horrifying alien creatures hidden deep below the surface, the surviving colonists retreat to a vault rumoured to contain advanced alien technology. So, Interesting. It's got Borderlands heart in it, but it's, yeah. it's going to make it a... It, that sounds like a survivalist film. Yeah, that sounds kind of different from what I'd want. It yeah. sounds a bit more basic than what I'd want. Yeah. If it's just, like you said, it's just almost a disaster survival movie with, you know, the Borderlands ethos. I do like the idea of the elevator pitch of Guardians of the Galaxy meet and meets Mad Max. Yeah, good. Is admittedly awesome, but yeah, the rest the perfect of move. that plot sounds like the most boring thing you can do with the Borderlands iconography. You've got the vaults, you've got the aliens, you've got the guns. Give me compelling villains and compelling characters over that any day. But Lee Winnell, nobody mentioned this. If I had to choose I'll anyone to make any <laughs> movie ever, Lee Winnell is the one because I love everything he's ever written. Yes. Upgrade is so good. Oh you and God. Scott Telford like it even more than I do. It's that perfect. is an absolute smash hit film and you guys should all check it out. But why isn't Lee Winnell on board? Was I know. ever Upgrade is honestly the best film of 2018, like 100%. And The Invisible Man coming out soon is yes. just the best film of whenever that is. 2020, this year, Jesus. Oh, this Borderlands stuff honestly has blown my mind a bit because thinking of Lee Winnell do it would be absolutely perfect. But his name has just kind of cropped up and then been washed away again. So I'm pretty sure they just said, hey, do you want to do this? And he went, no. No. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, his name was thrown around. Again, would have been perfect for the IP, but maybe I, I think leaning towards Eli Roth is still good for the humor element because it Definitely. needs humour injected into it. But yeah, this sounds like kind of pitch black or something rather than yes. uh, Mad Max uh, or Guardians of the Galaxy meets Mad Max, which is what it definitely should be. It should be a big space adventure rather than a survival horror. Yeah, that plot to me sounds like it could be almost any sci-fi film. It yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be a Borderlands movie. Yeah, it takes all the key elements and kind of squashes them together, but in something that doesn't fit with the narrative of Borderlands. But if you want something that doesn't fit with the narrative of Borderlands, Please tell me more. then I have more for you, which is from uh, another site. Uh, again, this is the only one that has reported this kind of plot um, and said that it's rumoured to be, so I don't know how reliable it is, but it's from Full Circle Cinema, who said that Lilith is going to be the protagonist instead. So instead of being a vault hunter, you're going to be Lilith. Okay. Um, and she's in the Atlas Corporation space prison when the CEO gives her a chance to earn her freedom by rescuing giving his daughter, who is Tiny Tina, who notably in the series is an orphan whose parents have been murdered. So, so we're making some good starts here, some yes. very faithful adaptations. <laughs> Ooh, on the planet Pandora, and then the, the mission takes an unexpected turn, but it becomes clear that the little girl is key to unlocking a valuable alien vault that Atlas wants all for itself. So that bit makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Um, but then it says there's gonna be Claptrap, um, body bod the bodyguard Krieg, and a group of vault hunters. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have lots of questions. I'm trying to take all of that in. That, again, sounds like another movie using the Borderlands characters this time and iconography to yeah. make something that is not at all 
bottle? <laughs> There's just nothing mentioned about Lilith being a siren or having powers or that being integral and she's in prison and then Tiny Tina is there also but with parents and needs rescue. I do not know what this, <laughs> what this one is. I do not know I do not if know. these are related to anything. Right, the, the big question is, is that when it comes to Borderlands, even though you might think he's a little bit overexposed now, mm. Handsome Jack is one of the best video game villains ever, and mm -hmm. the fact that his name has not cropped up in either of those two synopsises would make me upset. I feel like, again, even though he perhaps has been a bit overused now in the games, He's too identifiable and too good to it. and charismatic to not be used. Yeah, and voice actor needs to play the actual yes. character as well. Like he's perfect for it. Either that or Nathan Fillion <laughs> is allowed. <laughs> Those are the two that are allowed. Um, but yeah, another interesting tidbit about this film that I found is that um, the people involved with the film think that Dwayne The Rock Johnson would be the perfect clap track. So it's, it's in good hands, guys. It's yeah, it's in perfect hands. Uh, you know, what? what? <laughs> the, perf the perfect clap trap. Uh, what? They just think you'd make a really, really great clap trap. Yeah, the, is, this is Borderlands 3 creative director, actually. Really? Yeah, Paul Sage. Listen, listen, listen I am not one to tell Dwayne The Rock Johnson yeah. that he can't do something, but there are so many other people and things and aliens he could play in this franchise, but no, make him a voice. Look, look at the same time, if you told me 10 years ago that Vin Diesel would be the vo voice of Groot, yeah. I would have also said yeah. that is ridiculous because Vin no. Diesel, I would have said, hell no. hell no, not the pitch black man, not <laughs> the Chronicles of Riddick man, he can't do it. So you know what? Maybe Dwayne can. Maybe, Maybe Dwayne fine. the Rock Johnson can. Maybe he can. I would I would pay money to see that, not going to lie. The, the storylines, again, I don't know how reliable they are. I don't know if that's how it's going to be. We don't even know if Eli Roth is like confirmed director because the yeah. tweet was deleted so quickly but we can assume that we're going to see more about it at um, the PAX East show. Definitely yeah, that's a good uh, nice little segue yeah it yeah. seems like Eli Roth is going yeah. like if it's deleted it seems like it's 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 just waiting yeah. to happen. Randy is going to hit that tweet button again and he's going Ding. to finally hopefully confirm that he is directing the Borderlands movie which was announced back in 2015 but I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below do you think this is a good choice of director to helm this film and would you like to see any of those two plots actually make it to the big screen because I think we've made our opinions on that matter quite clear. But even if you don't, I've been Josh. You can follow me on Twitter at Josh Brune with two O's. This has been Ash. You can follow her on Twitter at, at Ash Millman. And we will see you soon. This news has kind of broken our minds, so I'm really yes. sorry for that. We're Ooh. going to have a lie down like out there somewhere. Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, oh God. Which way? Help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh.